like Sherlock Holmes. More importantly, how can you get your students to be more like Sherlock Holmes and get them really thinking in your art room or your regular classroom? This year, in my classroom, our goal was to magnify our learning, as you can see on the wall behind us. And we used Sherlock Holmes as our guide to help us as we explored art and many other academic subject areas right here in my art room at San Lake Elementary School. My name is Beth Elliston, and I'm here in Orlando, Florida, and I'm going to show you all about color and art and color and science, things that you might know, might remember from when you were a kid, or you've never heard before. Let's check it out. Science and art are a lot like fraternal twins. They don't look exactly alike, but they've got a lot in common. When you integrate these two subjects, the connections are made for your students, which magnifies their learning in your classroom and allows them to make connections with the world. When I start my research for a cross-curricular unit, I start by exploring the standards of the subject I will be pulling into my art room. Once I find something I think will work nicely with the art theme, I begin to blend the two together. For this specific unit on color theory, the coordinating science standards were designed for upper grade levels. I had to change my game plan a little, and so instead of using a light standard from science, I decided to use standards that were based on the scientific method and empirical observations. The coordinating art standards I pulled from involved working collaboratively, using accurate art vocabulary, and problem-solving connections in non-art areas. Our activity for this unit was to use the scientific method to explore color and science and light and compare it to what we know about color and art and pigment. The first thing we had to do was review what we knew about color theory up until this point. I love to get the kids up and moving as much as I can, so for a quick color wheel review, I took them out of the classroom, gave them dots of primary and secondary colors, and had them get into teams to create a color wheel. They then had to find their complementary colors and pair themselves with colors that would be used to make a tertiary color. As this activity unfolded, I started thinking of the connections that could be made with math, as we could have measured the circle, discussed radius and circumference, and discussed angles between the colors. Once you start integrating other academic subjects into your art, your mind starts making connections with everything it sees. The hope is that by doing this, the connections that come so easily to me will also come easily to my students. Another step in reviewing what we knew about color theory was color creation. I wanted them to be confident and sure of what they knew about the primary colors and how colors were made. This was going to be a key piece of background knowledge for our experiment with light and crucial for the comparisons we were going to make. Food coloring is a great medium for mixing colors, although you could use paint or other mediums as well. Once I was sure the students had a strong grasp of color and art, it was time to throw a monkey wrench in everything they believed to be true and finite. I love using dynamic PowerPoint presentations to hook students and get them excited about the lesson I have in store for them. Because I only see my classes once a week, I needed a quick review and recap of the previous week's critical information. To start off this portion of the unit, I decided we needed help from the anchors, and it appears they had breaking news. I chose two students from the class to read the word bubbles in their most professional anchor voices. 
The quick play-by-play -play sounds a little like this. This just in. We've recently received pictures from an art room that seems to have some unusual activity going on. That's right, Bob. These pictures are a little odd. What kind of art room is this? Well, Jane, we are going to find out. We've got reporters at the scene to let us know just what's going on. At this point, I call on student groups and ask them what the critical information learned during these weeks was. Students report just as if they were investigators at the scene. It's then back to the news desk, where our anchors report, Wow, Bob! Those students really know a lot about color and art! You're right, Jane, but it seems there may be more to this story. It appears the teacher has something that may change how they see the world. Well, folks, we'll keep you posted as this story unfolds. Once this fun review is over, it's on to the rest of our lesson. Our county uses Marzano's Art and Science of Teaching model as a basis for our instruction. Learning goals and scales accompany every unit. You'll notice at the top are the two standards used in this unit. The scale starts at zero with the learning goal based in three. The students will be able to plan and carry out scientific investigations of various types and use appropriate reference material to support the investigations. The main reference material comes from the elements of art being color. Because science is not one of the main subjects focused on in school, I decided students needed additional support to help them during their experiment. I strategically grouped the class into teams and then provided them with these handouts to help guide and document their learning. It's always surprising to me how difficult independent thinking is for students. You'll notice here that I defined a problem for the class and had sentence stems for the prediction and the conclusion section. Independent thinking and problem solving is something we do naturally in the art room, although students don't realize it. I try to always point this out to them during our creation of art. We do not have erasers in my class for this exact reason. In art, we don't make mistakes, rather happy accidents, and we can always find a way to resolve them by changing the design. This simple lesson in art helps wire the brain for other subject areas outside of the art room, and more importantly, for life. Each section of the Experimental Inquiry handout is to be filled out by a different student in the group. The first portion of the handout asks students to observe and describe. I passed out these diffraction glasses to each member of the class and then asked students to count to three in unison and then put them on. The response was ooh and ah across the board. By putting the diffraction glasses on, they were really able to see the world differently. If you aren't familiar with diffraction glasses, they're glasses that have plastic filters for the eyepieces, which have narrowly spaced scratches in them. These scratches are so close together that when light shines through them, the light spreads out or diffracts. This is similar to what happens when light shines through a prism. They can be used to observe the light spectrum that make the colors that we see. My hope was that after seeing that all the colors make up white light, students would make a prediction about primary colors. In my ideal world, students would reflect on the primary colors in art and come up with a prediction for what the primary colors were in light. I passed out LED lights from the light blocks kit I received after going to a STEM workshop on light. I knew by bringing this great kit to my classroom, it could help us move full steam along through our unit on color. Adding art to the science, technology, engineering, and math model is a no-brainer, and with awesome kits like this one, the art room can be transformed into a creative research lab. Back in my ideal world, after the students made their predictions about color in art versus color in science and light, they would experiment with the LED lights, attempting to mix colors and see what the results were. They would then compare these color mixing combinations with what they knew about color in art, and come up with some very interesting findings. They would put the diffraction glasses on and notice that the red, green, and blue LED lights did not split into different colors, therefore indicating that in science and light, red, green, and blue are the primary colors. In the real world, my students all had varying predictions and many or most of them not related to the problem I had posed. 
Some students focused on how wide they could make their lights, or if the light reflected off of different surfaces, or how hot the light was on different surfaces. Some looked at the different shapes that could be made by making the lights angle, or projecting them off different surfaces from different distances. Others tried to make shapes by using two or three of the lights together. Of course, my mind was racing as I watched them explore and experiment. I was thinking of geometric shapes and the math concepts that could also be incorporated here. Once all the data was recorded, it was back to the news desk as our anchors were amazed with what they were seeing and wanted to know what this all meant. It was time to discuss the team's experiments and see if their results answered the questions at hand, whether color in art acts differently than color in science. As the discussion ensued, students were quick to realize that the procedure for the experiment and the data collected did not address the problem at hand. The lessons leading up to my Truth About Color lesson started weeks earlier. My goal was to show the students the difference between color in art and color in science because it really is so cool and is a mind tickler. But what happened was the students learned about the scientific method and the importance of making reasonable predictions and creating a procedure that would test the prediction and answer the problem. This lesson's most critical and beneficial information was learned in the student reflections when they realized their errors in reasoning. Once the groups evaluated their experiment and saw where they were led astray, it was only a short matter of time before they saw in color what I had wanted them to see all along. It was not only the students whose reflections led them to the aha moments I was hoping they'd find, but my own reflections led me to some as well. What was interesting was that this lesson did show the difference in everyone's thought processes. I was thinking there was only one clear way to test the problem with the materials given. That was by using the diffraction glasses to look at the LED lights and by mixing the LED lights together to see what colors they make. I was surprised to see the students experimenting with how the color from the LED lights changed when they were put on different surfaces, and this was used as their evidence that color in light is different than color in art with pigment. Although independent thinking was not my direct goal for this unit, it was quite clear that the students had made a great step towards it. What fascinates me about color in art and pigment versus color in science and light is how different they really are. White light is composed of many colors of light. Once the diffraction glasses are put on, it's a rainbow of colors that can be seen exploding from it. Where in art, the three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. In light, the three primary colors are red, green, and blue, which causes a completely different truth about color theory for that discipline. When mixed together in different proportions, these colors of light, just as in art, create millions of different colors. Being an art teacher and seeing red, green, and blue light make white is amazing. Seeing green and red make yellow really does tickle my brain and completely changes the way I see the world and understand it. Charles Negray said, where science ends, art begins. But I believe the connection is more integral. What we know from science affects how we see the world and interact with it. And what we create in our art helps share our understanding of what we know and experience. So rather than saying where science ends, art begins, I think it's more accurate to say where there is science, art can be found.